much. As you can see, um, Jira HPC, uh, my background is high performance computing and fluid mechanics. Jira is the Jüdisch Aachen Research Alliance, the collaboration between the RWTH Aachen University and um, the Jüdisch Forschungszentrum. So I will concentrate on uh, one topic in the whole pipeline of the simulation of nasal cavity flows, which is uh, grid generation, for which we uh, do DNS simulation and uh, we actually um, need to uh, generate uh, pretty big meshes and therefore I wrote in my PhD thesis uh, a paragrid generator. So basically what are uh, the disadvantages of serial grid generation or manual grid generation? Obviously uh, grid generation is very time consuming and it uh, requires manual input when it comes for example to boundary attached meshes. Uh, the domain de decomposition for large scale meshes can be very complicated and uh, for a large number of cores uh, can also consume a lot of time and uh, serial grid generation uh, requires, of course, for large meshes, a lot of memory. So uh, the advantages of the meshes that we're using, which are hierarchical Cartesian meshes, are that we have a fully automatic mesh generation, which I present here in this talk. We have a simple uh, uh, method uh, to adapt to the solution with adaptive me me uh, uh, meshes. We uh, have a high accuracy due to the orthogonal mesh lines we have, and uh, we can apply highly accurate uh, uh, s um, schemes. And of course, what we also can uh, do, uh, what uh, I will not talk about here in this talk topic, is uh, the implementation of moving boundaries. So the advantages are obvious. Um, with parallel mesh generation, we can uh, generate meshes in a short amount of time and don't need that big amount of memory. So th these are just two examples which are let's say a little bit more time consuming here, here on the left side that was done by a former uh, PhD student at our, at our institute. Um, uh, he manually generated this mesh. It took him months to generate that. And here on the right side you, uh, you see uh, what you were talking about uh, where you have uh, like a prism mesh here on the, uh, on the, uh, in the uh, near wall region and uh, finite element uh, uh, mesh in the center. So I will uh, go over an explanation of how we do the parallel mesh generation and also I will talk a little bit about the parallelization of the geometry which can also be very complex. So the, it consists of several stages. Uh, based on six stages you, you see the outline here on the right side and basically we start by reading in the geometry. We assume we already had it, have it at hand and uh, we basically read it in, uh, put it in a so-called KD tree that uh, we can search for uh, triangles and for intersections very easily in logarithmic time. So what we then do is uh, we take the nasal cavity, we place uh, like a cube around the nasal cavity and continuously start subdividing. You can imagine that every process is doing this yeah, at the very beginning up to a certain level. And then uh, we start uh, uh, refinement uh, in parallel. Yeah, so an octree is basically what you see here. Um, you have a root node and uh, basically a cube is subdivided in eight subcubes and this constitutes basically a child, a parent-child relationship and also the neighborhood relationship between the cells. Then of course in each iteration we need to find out which cells are outside uh, the geometry. So uh, imagine that the red curved line is, uh, is the, the boundary and this is the mesh we ha already have at a certain stage. Yeah? So, um, we have in previous uh, iterations already identified which of these cells already have a cut with the geometry. So we only need to consider the children of those cells uh, for a cut test. Yeah? So for this one example here, we identify the single cell here and I tell uh, the, the algorithm this is a, a cut cell. Yeah? Then we end up with something like this. And then of course we need to identify uh, which cells are inside and outside. We do this by selecting a single random cell inside and shoot rays and cut uh, the number of intersections with the geometry and using this basically as an inside-outside detection for this single cell and then we do a inside flooding, find out okay which cells are inside and then basically remove other, uh, all the other cells. Um, then uh, this was all in serial so far, yeah, we refined to a certain level and now uh, we do already our subdivision for the parallel uh, regeneration. Um, therefore you can imagine you already have the cells on a certain level, we remove all uh, coarser uh, cells and then we place the so-called Hilbert curve which is a face uh, um, um, space filling curve uh, into the domain and then we cut along this uh, um, uh, along this curve as you can see here on the right here. Yeah, you have different ranks here. Uh, certain ranks are only responsible for certain cells and they throw away all the other cells that they are not responsible for. 
Okay, so then uh, every process continues the refinement and um, does it in, in parallel. So uh, everybody, uh, every process kept its own cells, continued the refinement, and then up to a certain level. Again, also with inside-outside detection, we need to get rid of the cells that are outside. And then what we do is uh, local boundary refinement. So uh, like you already pointed out, we need to have a high resolution uh, near the wall. So um, this is basically here, what you see down here. Yeah, so, uh, let's assume this is the geometry here. And these are different uh, uh, computational domains for the grid generation. Then what we say, the user can define like a distance, uh, then a distance measurement based on the distance from the from the boundary is uh, basically generated, propagated uh, across the mesh that is already there. And then uh, the user can say, okay, we want to refine this, and then another level can be decided and so on, and we get closer and closer. And of course, which is not shown here, the cells outside are removed at each time step. This is an example for here uh, for a nasal cavity. Um, so then um, for, um, we need to, since every process, the whole thing so far has been uh, done without any communication uh, on an HPC system. So um, the next thing is we need to identify the neighbors across the HPC ranks yeah, between the neighboring domains. So how this is done, uh, during the mesh generation, we already know uh, we have certain cells which are neighbors to uh, neighboring domains. Yeah, and if you continuously refine, we know uh, cells uh, that uh, are inherited from those cells are already cells that neighbor the domain, uh, and they are ad identified at the very beginning and created on the other side, yeah, uh, on, on the other domain, and continuously also refined on this side. And then initially, uh, you know uh, from the very beginning, these are the cells which uh, are like the window cells, which have no neighbor on the local domain, and they know exactly, they have a mapping on the other side, the halo cell cells, which are uh, <coughs> a copy of the window cells, and then we basically identify from this neighborhood the, the global ID neighborhood. So uh, some words on uh, parallel geometry yeah, um, and the, the I.O. Um, so we then uh, write everything uh, out in, in parallel um, with parallel net CDF. And then uh, additionally, we store, let's say, um, the, the, the cells that are on the minimal level uh, we call them the mil min cells, uh, which we used for the subdivision with the Hilbert uh, curve uh, in a separate list. And we later on use this list then again for um, the subdivision in the computation. We know exactly then at this point, this cell in this min cell uh, list has uh, this, these numbers of uh, children. Um, and based on these, this number, we later on do the distribution. And additionally, we can subdivide the geometry. You can imagine that you have many triangles uh, if you extract it from a CT image. Uh, so we, we might also want to um, distribute the triangles. So you can imagine that you have uh, this distribution here. Yeah, this is the Hilbert curve. The red line is the, um, uh, the geometry. And we basically run along this curve and count the number of triangles and separate, uh, write this in a separate file, which we later on can also uh, read in in parallel. OK, I'll skip this. Um, then. Um, when, before we do the uh, simulation, of course, we need to do some pre-processing. Pre um, you can imagine you now have the parallel geometry on disk and you have the parallel grid on uh, disk. So in the very beginning, we do the mesh I.O. and the Hilbert decomposition based on the list that I was talking about. And then additionally, we also need to find out which triangles belong to these cells. Yeah? So um, we look, at, look up these inform this information in the... Um, uh, in the geometry file, in the parallel geometry file that we wrote, yeah, there we have a number of triangles and the triangle coordinates um, for a certain cell in this min cell list that we use for the decomposition. Then, of course, we also need to uh, have some information um, um, between neighbors. Yeah, so we already did the decomposition for HPC computing, and uh, you can imagine here you again have the window cells, yeah, which are. Uh, have no uh, neighbor on their own domain, but are a there is a copy on the other side, the halo cells. And we need to have additionally the information of the triangles. That means the triangles that live in the, uh, in, uh, the window cells are being copied to the other domain, and here vice versa. So that we have all the information available. Some uh, information about the scalability, since we not only use this for nasal cavity flows, but also for extremely large scale computations. Uh, we can generate with this method um, uh, really a big amount of cells uh, in a short amount of time on a really big uh, number of uh, um, CPUs. 
Uh, this is basically what is shown here. It's the scalability of the mesh generator. So um, we generated uh, some meshes on uh, two machines. That is on the one hand the Hermit machine, on, uh, which uh, is a, uh, was placed at uh, HLS Stuttgart at the High Performance Computing Center there and at uh, JSC Jülich Supercomputing Center. And we generated there within a short amount of time. Here you can see 10 billion cells approximately here on this is the for example, the full uh, Hermit machine here with 112,000 cores. And here uh, on the U Queen, you, you see basically the scalability is dropping. But nevertheless, um, you should look at the numbers. We can generate really a big amount of uh, cells in a short amount of time. Yeah, and uh, here uh, you see a pretty good scalability uh, up to uh, half of the U, uh, U Queen. Uh, uh, complete U Queen consists of about 450,000 cores. And the biggest uh, mesh. Uh, we generate so far uh, 60, uh, 400 billion. Okay, then uh, some information also on the parallel geometry. Um, I was talking about uh, um, that um, the triangles can consume a lot of memory. Uh, this is one of the examples. So here we have like uh, 1.4 gigabyte of memory which are uh, used by uh, this geometry. Uh, if we do it this in serial, yeah, so every process would read in this geometry and um, some of the uh, um, some of the HPC centers, they don't have that much amount of memory available for uh, computations. That means we parallelize it, and it has certain advantages. So for example, here on the left side, uh, if you look at th these curves, these velvet curves, yeah, uh, this is ba uh, basically the global memory allocation yeah, that is required. <coughs> it is obvious that if, if you double the number of cores, you double the amount of, uh, of, of memory that is required, and then uh, you have to look here on the left side, that's an, uh, given in terabytes. So if you want to do a computation with this geometry on a quarter of the U-Queen, you would end up with, let's say, 43 terabytes of global memory requirements. And um, in contrast, um, if you use um, the parallel geometry, yeah, you see here, this is the green line here. Yeah, you uh, have to look here on the right side. It's the right uh, axis. Uh, and there, the memory requirement is uh, given in uh, gigabyte. Yeah? So um, the total amount is then 2.5 gigabyte approximately, a little bit more, 2.25 gigabyte. So um, this brings me to my summary conclusion. Um, what I've presented to you is a highly scalable parallel mesh generator um, we, uh, that allows us to construct um, hierarchical Cartesian meshes in a short amount of time, um, also for the use of the flow uh, computations in nasal cavity. And we constructed with this parallel mesh generation also parallel geometries. And uh, as, you, uh, as I showed to you, um, the, the memory uh, allocation uh, we were able to reduce drastically. Um, I didn't mention this on the last slide, but we were also able to reduce the, uh, the, the requirements for the uh, pre-processing uh, before we run the solver extremely. And uh, what I've not shown, what I was, what I was always talking about, um, these meshes we not only use for nasal cavity flows, but for a variety of uh, different flow configurations, compressible flow, air acoustics, moving boundaries. And uh, I will give a presentation later on uh, this uh, evening at uh, 20 past 5, I think. And uh, there will, I will uh, use this method basically to construct meshes. And then I will show you some results on nasal cavity flows. Thank you. Yeah, it seems a uh, uh, pretty amazing job. In fact, it's quite similar to a Snappy XMS, right? A Snappy XMS is more or less working the same way. I guess that the very only difference is that you are you are introducing your Hilbertian, your distribution of, of the cell numbers. You're introducing that prior than Snappy XMS. Have you compared the performance with them? No. Hmm. No, just to know if you are uh, touching them. But I'm not sure if they can produce uh, uh, this, this amount of cells in this short amount of time. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, of course, it's, they, yeah, they are producing that. Yeah. Uh, Snappy is parallelized as well. It's and in fact, it's working like that. It's yeah. producing a cube and dividing it and producing the mess in parallel, of course. So it could be interesting to know if you are out touching them. Just to know. That's a good idea. Okay, thank you.